Hello, music makers. Welcome back. I was browsing the Afro House category on Beatport. Still trying to figure out what the difference is between that and Organic House. But anyway, I couldn't help but notice a certain chord trend. Eight out of the top ten were using the same four chords. And even if you don't include those major label, uh, let's call them commissioned works, <laughs> the chords were still in six out of ten. And the last time I spotted a musical trend in the top 10 of Beatport, it went pretty well. <laughs> so who knows, maybe some of you will find this just as helpful. Here are the four chords of Afro House. Here is my reference folder where I bring in all the reference tracks. As you can see there on the right, I have put the chord progression as the track name. So for those who just needed the chords, there we are, one, seven, six, and four in various combinations. There's your video. Good night. <laughs> For those of you who want the details, let's get stuck in. The prime example here, I think it's only perfectly appropriate. We look at black coffee. Many would argue I wouldn't even be looking at a category called Afro House without him. His collab with and me on the Rapture part three uses this to great effect. Rapture Part 3 is a 176. Two bars for each chord except for the 6. Let's build our triads. Check out any of my chord videos if you want to know how to do this. Chord length can end up playing a role in how chill the track turns out. For a little rhythmic push, chord 7 is an eighth early. That's just a little bit of rhythmic interest. There's also a little more interest to go here. A little interruption of a passing chord, it's chord 5. Like that. This track also has everything doubled an octave up. And to finish off, we have these little embellishments, these little top melodies. Usually just higher octaves of the chord we're playing. We're also droning note 5 for this section. Note 5 of the scale, staying throughout all these chords. I'm going to double this loop because we're going to add a variation for the second time round. The original has a very played live feel. One way to get closer to that is make sure you add lots of different variations. Don't keep the same things on repeat too often. I remember there's a couple of extra notes from chord one up here. In a nutshell, that is Rapture Part 3. So, the Levy M remix of Shaka Khan's Ain't No Body. We start the same as Rapture Part 3, the 176. But with the following changes, this is a more syncopated push here. And there's a rhythmic change up here too. We have this little offbeat turnaround of chord six and seven to get back to one. The 
chord is repeated here. We can go a little higher on the velocity, hit the piano a little harder. This track is higher energy than the Rapture. This track also uses octaves and a top melody. And it also drones note five, this time through every chord. Let's add that drone to the lower octave. I'm going to leave it off the end turnaround though, so we get that upwards motion back to chord one. For Anima and Rebuke's Siren, this is a 1764. The chord voicing is different. The top note of the chord is swapped underneath. So now the third of the chord becomes the kind of top melody. In fact, let me accent that. I think I need to bring the lower ones down also. Yes, that's the vibe. As for rhythmic pushes, similar to Rapture, we have the push on seven and also on the four. Like that. There's also extra chord repeats here. setting up the early push and the one into chord four is a little passing chord up to chord seven adding a little bit of melody and that's it quite simple that one it's a busier production overall the piano isn't the main focus so there's not too many details in it Hugel, Topic and Arash's I Adore You is a good example of keeping it simple. This one's a 1746 with no embellishments, no early rhythmic pushes, no strange voicings. It's just straight triads as far as I can hear. All the melodic interest is coming from elsewhere, namely the vocal and the lead sound. We'll have a look at leads later. Move by Adam Port and Styrim is the same progression, just starting from a different point. As you can see at the top here, I've changed my starting point of the loop to the middle because this is a 4 6 1 7. We have swapped the acoustic piano for an electric one, a Rhodes piano. The main interest comes from this top melody added to the chords, which utilizes notes one and two on this rhythm. goes up to notes three and four, falling to note two. Doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. Just take some notes of your chord and make a very simple hook out of them. This does work on piano as well, just in case you're wondering. Sounds slightly different, obviously. Rhodes pianos are very mellow, great for chill vibes. However, slightly less chill is that we are now on one chord per bar, not every two bars, probably because of that more poppy R&B style vocal. There are more tracks I looked at, but they don't really add anything more to the conversation. So that's all the main principles covered. Let's summarize. So it's chords one, seven, six, and four. The order can vary depending on what vibe you're going for. If you want a soft, chill, melancholy type vibe, then maybe the 176 or 1764 is what you're after. Or if you'd like a slightly more uplifting mood, try the other direction. Start on four, go up to six, then either up to seven, then one, 
or you can do four, six, then one, and transition back down with seven. You can try one chord every two bars to keep it nice and relaxed, or maybe you can pick up the pace with one chord per bar. That's probably best judged against the vocal. And don't forget, if it's sounding too ploddy, too pedestrian, you can add some rhythmic interest by pushing some chords earlier, or you can add an extra chord stab before the move to help prepare for it. If you'd like some extra colour or texture in the chords, or maybe more cohesion, you could drone one note through every chord, what we call common tone. You may remember that from my Piano House tutorial. The most common notes to choose are note 1 or note 5 of the scale. You can force either of those into any of these chords and it should work. Lastly, you can also add interest with chord melodies. Melodies that you can sneak inside the chord part. It doesn't have to be complicated. You can just pick notes from the chord, but play them at an upper octave. Or pick passing notes, which are notes in between, to bridge the gap between changes. Okay, I think we should look at the sound now, don't you? Pitch is only part of the equation of vibe, after all. Let's look at timbre. So piano is definitely one of the staples of this style. The best free one, in my opinion, is the autograph grand inside of Spitfire Audio's Labs. Ignore this velocity plugin, that's just me being lazy, saving me reprogramming all the velocities on my separate MIDI parts. You can see a little EQ dip here. I did feel for this mood that the tone was a little bit pokey in the mids. Of course, if we want maximum chill, we can just use a low pass filter. And because I'm forever concerned with mono compatibility and pianos are often a problem, I have reduced the side channel on this one. Otherwise, it was going to be way too wide. If you are confident your audience is made up of 100% headphone users or audiophiles with high-end hi-fi systems, then you can skip this step. If you want to play around with different flavors, as we saw from one of the tracks there, we can try electric pianos, the most common being Rhodes and Wurlitzers. I'm just using Ableton's built-in one here. Any will do. Your software probably comes with one. In fact, I'm not aware of a door that doesn't. Of course, we can always layer both. Be careful of the low mids building up though. Speaking of good layer options, pads, Here's a kind of choiry, swirly pad I've made. For the sake of the video, I'm being lazy here, but if you want to keep the pad in the background, you can just have it play the basic block chord, not the melody parts and all the extra stuff. Now, if you find that your track is too chilled out, for example, Maybe it's one of these type of tracks with bigger percussion. Let's turn on this reverb. And imagine our vocal is quite high energy. You could use a fairly bright and consistent saw pad like this. That's another type of pad layer you might consider. This one adds more energy, not just background atmosphere like the last one. There's the patch, stacked saws, as I said. All these will be in the description, of course. One last pad layer option. I call this a wave station pad. One of the references had something like this in it. Reminded me of a Korg wave station. That one's a bit more fluty, airy, with some attack. Let's chill this out again while we quickly discuss bass. The bass side of things is fairly simple. 
let me just filter this piano while we focus on bass. In terms of bass part, all of them are just following the root notes of the chord. Well, all of them except Black Coffee. Rapture used something called a pedal tone, but that's another video. As for the sound, mainly it's just a filtered saw wave. The more chill the track is, the lower and steeper the filter is. So barely any high frequencies for the chill stuff. Or we can open up when we need more energy. Let a little bit more of that buzz or growl back through. I also noticed a few of the references had this extra fifth tone in there. Gives the bass its own melodic flavor. That can sound good sometimes with a bit of extra glide. It's not adding much here, but give it a try if you want the notes to bend into one another. And that's all there is to the bass tone. As for effects, there's no tricks, nothing on the bass bus except some side chain. For effects on the keys, we're just removing some of the lows to get them out of the way of the bass. Side chain, of course, and my go-to reverb for long, chill, atmospheric tails, it's Dragonfly on the hall setting. Put it on any hall, turn up the reverb time, instant atmosphere. Now, the last piece of the musical puzzle, these ARP or lead synths. I call them pacers because they keep pace. Even though they're technically a lead synth sound, they're playing more of a percussion part. As you can see, just playing 16th notes on note one. I've made sure the synth patch is velocity sensitive and I've played with the velocities to create different grooves within those 16ths. Here's a variation with different velocities and note length changes. Little melody on the turnaround there, but still just 16th notes. Here's one in the Rapture style. Playing an octave on note five. In more of what's known as a clave rhythm. All these paces are just using note one or five usually. Here's a nice variation on a kalimba. If you don't know what a kalimba is, they look like this. You may have heard them referred to as thumb pianos. A beautiful African instrument, worth exploring for this genre, definitely. This is a great free one by Echo Soundworks. If you want something nearer the Adam Port track, do this, alternate between five and one on 16s. You're hearing this with a hand pan sample, but any tuned hand percussion or anything hit with mallets will work. Speaking of mallet instruments, this is an African instrument called a balafon. Looks like this. It's like a marimba, but with these resonant chambers underneath. Another great option for a pacer or even a lead. Speaking of marimbas, you can just use one of those as well if you can't find a good balafon sample. This one's just on eighth notes. Again, if you're just using this as percussion pace, not melodic, then note one or note five are your go-to. Okie dokie, that about does it for today. Hope you found it helpful. If you did, you know what to do. Don't forget to check the video's description for all the relevant links. And if you want to know more on Afro House, check out this video where I made a very similar organic house track from scratch using only free loops and plugins. Otherwise, until next week, I'll see you in the comments. Bye bye.